6.5 Linear Optimization Key Concept Vertex Theorem for Optimization If a linear programming problem can be optimized, an optimal value will occur at one of the vertices of the region representing the set of feasible solutions. In other words, if we have our constraints and we graph them and the feasible region is this shape right here, uh, the values that will maximize the problem and the values that will minimize the problem will always happen at the vertices. So an answer won't be in the middle of this line right here. The maximum or minimum value of f of xy is equal to ax plus by plus c over the set of feasible solutions graphed occurs at point a, b, c, d, e, or f. So in other words, at a vertex. Linear programming. To solve a linear programming problem, follow these steps. Graph the region corresponding to the solution of the system of constraints. Find the coordinates of the vertices of the region formed, and then evaluate the objective function at each vertex to determine which x and y values, if any, maximize or minimize the function. Find the maximum and minimum values of the objective function, f of x equals 2x plus y, and for what values of x and y they occur, subject to the following constraints. Let's graph these two lines. On the first one, the x and the y-intercepts are both 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 up here. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 there. On the other one, the x-intercept, let's, let's make a note of that. The x-intercept is 6 and the y-intercept is 4. x-intercept is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Right about there. And the y-intercept is 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, right? So a line like that. The inequalities are both less than, which uh, means underneath or below the line, as long as these are positive, and as long as we can write these in slope-intercept form, and it doesn't change the sign. In other words, we minus x over, and uh, it stays as a less than. When we write the other one in slope-intercept form, we'd have 3y less than or equal to 12 minus 2x, and then when we divide by 3, that would stay less than in slope-intercept form. Both of these are now below. That one's below, this one's below. So we're below both lines, and then we're above the x-axis and to the right of the y-axis. In other words, when you put these two together, you're talking about the first quadrant. Now we want to know, it appears as if this is the point 1, 2, 3, 2. So this is 3, 2. This one right here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We have 5, 0. Uh, we also have 0, 0 as a vertex. And up here we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is 0, 4. Now those are the four regions where the minimum and the maximum can occur on this feasible region for 2x plus y. So f of x, y is equal to 2x plus y. Now let's look at 0, 0. That, of course, is going to be uh, you know, 2 times 0 plus 0, that's equal to 0. And then how about uh, 5, 0? We have 2 times 5 plus 0, that's 10. We have 3, 2. 2 times 3 plus 2, that's 8. And then we have another one, the 0, 4. That's 2 times 0 and then plus 4, which is going to be 4. So we have a maximum. Now, the, uh, let's make sure we answer the question. Uh, and let's see. And for uh, find the maximum and minimum values and for what values of x and y they occur. So we say that we have a maximum uh, of 10 at the point, this one right here, at 5, 0. And we have a minimum of 0 at the point, uh, that was the point 2, 0. No, uh, 0, 0. 0, 0. Find the maximum and minimum values of the objective function and for what values of x and y they occur, subject to the following constraints. Let's get uh, some x and y intercepts. The x intercept on this one would be 6. The y intercept would be 4. On this one, we have an x intercept of 3 and y is equal to 6. Let's graph those. On the first one, x is 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And y is 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And on the other one, the x is 3. And the y is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 right there. 
So cross is right there. Let's find, uh, now, now both of them are less than. These are not negatives. So if we put them in slope intercept form, the sign would not change. We would not divide by a negative. So both are below. And then this suggests right here that we're in the first quadrant. So we're actually in this region right here. Now, I know a couple of these points. I know a few. This one is 3, 0. This one is 0, 0. And this one right here is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 4. But what about this intersection point right there? It's a little hard to tell with a graph. Now, if I subtracted these two equations, I'd have 0x plus 2y is less than or equal to 6. 12 minus 6 would give you the 6. So y is actually equal to 3 on the intersection of these two. And then we'd have 2x plus 3 uh, equals 6. We'd have 2x equals 3. So x is 3 halves. In other words, the x is actually 1 and a half. This is the point 3 comma 3 halves. Well, now we have the, uh, four points for uh, the vertices of our feasible region. And now we're going to subject them to uh, this function right here and give the min and max. We have the point 3, 0. We have 0, 0. We have 0, 4. And we have 3, 3 halves. For 3, 0, it's going to be uh, 3 plus 0, that's 3. 0, 0 gives us 0. 0, 4 is 12. And then 3 plus 3 times 3 halves is 3 plus 9 halves. Well, that's going to be 6 halves. So we're looking at 15 halves, which is 7 and a half. So this one isn't a min or a max. We have a maximum of 12 at the point 0, 4, and a minimum of 0 at 0, 0. Mechanics at a repair garage carry two name brands of tires, United and Royale. The number of Royale tires sold is typically less than or equal to twice the number of United tires sold. Let's kind of stop there and, and write this equation down. It says the number of Royale tires sold is typically less than. That means Y is less than or equal to or equal to uh, twice the number of United tires. So we have 2X. The shop can store at most 500 tires at one time. That means we have X plus y has to be less than or equal to 500. And then due to factory capacity, the number of Royale tires produced is greater than or equal to y is greater than or equal to 50 more than 0.25 times the number of United tires. So we have 0.25x and then plus 50. Those are going to be our constraints. Now we have the objective function. The garage earns $25 profit for each United tire, so the profit based on X and Y is equal to 25 times X and then plus for each United tire and $20 profit for each Royale tire. Uh, we have 20 times Y. Write an objective function and a list of constraints that model the given situation. The first three are the constraints. And then this right here, this is the objective function. Let's graph the constraints. The first one, we have a y-intercept of 0 and a slope of 2. But we're going to have to label our graph first. Let's go by 100s. And we'll have to do that because of the 500 here. 100, 200, 300. Really, I'm going by 50s, I suppose. 400, 500, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 500. And maybe let's, let's, let's start with this one, actually. I guess it doesn't really matter. On this one, both the x and the y intercepts are 500. The next one has a y intercept of 50 and then has a slope of really 1 fourth. So we go up 100 and over 400. 1, 2, 3, 4. So something like this. And then on the last one right here, we have a y-intercept of 0, and then up 200 and over 100, up 200 and over 100. So something like that. Let's look at the inequalities. We are below the one with the y-intercept of 0, so below, below here, 
and below here. And we're below because it's already in slope intercept form and it has less than. On this one, if I just minus x over, that'll stay less than because we don't have a negative here in front of y. So less than this line right here. And then on the last one, let's see this one right here with a slope of 50, we're actually above this line. This is just a point, not a negative. We're above here. So now we're inside this triangle. This is the feasible region. Now we're gonna, it's gonna take a little work to find the intersection points. Well, let's call uh, this one A. So that's line A, and that's actually right here. This is line A. Uh, let's call this one line B. That's B. And then this one line C. So the one with the y-intercept of 50 is C. Well, we're going to try to find some intersection points. How about this one right here? This is the intersection of line B and C. So here's B and C. Let's add over the 0.25. So we have 0.2, actually we'd have to subtract, wouldn't we? 0.25x plus y is equal to 50, and then we have x plus y is equal to 500. And we can subtract uh, these two equations and the y's will go away. Now if we have negative 0.25 minus 1, we have negative 1.25x is equal to negative 450. The x now is equal to 360. Well, if x is 360 and uh, they have to add up to 500, then we have the point 360 comma, uh, how about 140? And that looks about right. We have 350 here, so about 360 and just short of 150. This is the point 360 comma 150. Well, how about the intersection between lines A and B? So let's go up to A and B. Well, Y is 2X, so why don't we put a 2X in for this Y? We'd have X plus 2X is equal to 500. We have 3X is equal to 500. Uh, X is equal to 166 and 2 thirds, so why don't we call it 167? So this point right here is 167 comma well, they both have to add up to 500, so that means we have, oh, 333. And then down here, we have the intersection of A and C. We have, here's a, a line A, here's line C, so why don't we plug 2x in for y in C. We have 2x is equal to 0.25x plus 50. Let's minus over 0.25, that's 1.75x, is equal to 50. So the x in this point is, it's a decimal, it's 28.57, so why don't we just call it 29. And then the y is equal to, well, if the y is equal to 29, and this is uh, one of the lines we're using, if we double that, then we get 58. So this point right here is 29.58 approximately. Now we need to plug these three points into the objective function. Uh, when we plug this one in, we get 10,835. When we plug this point in down here, we get 12,000. And for the last point down here, we get 1,885. So the maximum profit will be 12,000. In order to get the most profit, the company should sell 360 of the, let's see, what was X? X is the United, 360 United and 150 Royal Tires. A local high school drama club is selling tickets to their spring play. A student ticket X costs $5 and a non-student ticket Y costs $7. That's actually the profit function. So we have profit based on XY is equal to 5X and then plus 7y. The auditorium has 522 seats. That means x plus y needs to be actually less than or equal to 522. Based on current ticket sales, the number of non-student tickets sold is less than or equal to half the number of student tickets sold. Well, student tickets is x, so y, let's see, it says that based on, so is less than or equal to 2 times x. 
Write an objective function in a list of constraints that model the given situation. Determine how many of each kind of ticket the drama club needs to sell the maximum uh, to maximize its profit. What is the maximum profit? Let's go to the graph. And we'll make it one screen here. There we go. And let's start uh, plotting this. We need to go all the way up to 522. So 100, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. 100. We have 100, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 600. Both intercepts are 522, so that's about right there approximately. Two about right there. The other one has a y-intercept of 0, and we go up 200 over 100, up 200 over 100. So somewhere about right there. Now both of these are less than, so we're going to be in this region right here. Uh, so one of the points I know is 0, 0. This point right here is 522 comma 0, and then we need to find this one right here. Well, if y is equal to 2x, we can write x plus 2x has to be equal to 522. 3x is equal to 522, so x is equal to 174. We have the point uh, 174, comma, 348. Now we'll plug this into the objective function. For 0, 0, we get uh, 0, so the first one's 0. For 522, 0, we get... 2610 and then for the last one we get 3306 now to maximize the profit we need to sell 174 student tickets at 348 adult tickets or non actually it's it said non student non student for a profit of $3,306. That's answering all of the questions they asked.